so this is Prolific Studio. Um, we spent a lot of time um, evolving this with a partner and we're going to continue to grow this out. So it's not just, I know that we're talking about uh, SAS to Python and PySpark today, but we're actually expanding this out to include stuff like Microsoft SQL to EDB as an example. Wow. <clears throat> so let me just uh, open up a workspace here. Uh, we're going to do just a simple test. Um, so I'm going to open up a proc. These are all just different proc steps that, we, you know, everybody, anybody who's writing SAS code uh, definitely appreciates these whole, uh, all of these procs. And I'm going to do a simple one. This is just a frequency proc. It's a popular one, obviously, for descriptive statistics and all that kind of stuff. But this comes, uh, we have our own data out there and everything else. So we make sure that, that, uh, that uh, it all can, it, it all is complete code and it executes. So, if you see on the bottom here, uh, I'm going to just take this chunk of code and I'm going to convert it to PySpark. We also have Pandas. So with PySpark translation, we're actually using PySpark data frames. If we convert to Pandas, then it's going to be Python using uh, Panda data frames. Right. So I'm just going to convert it to uh, PySpark. And, you know, this is a small chunk of code, so it's it's quick to get processed. Uh, and so I'll show you now. Let me go back up. We've got that code out. So let me expand the Python. And I have a couple of outputs here. One is the PySpark PY, which is just a basically Python uh, file. But we also can create and push this all out to a Jupyter notebook. So wow. I'm just going to I'm going to pull up the Python piece. Now, one of the things that we try to do um, in refactoring, especially Craig, is we really want to make sure that the code is uh, um, supportable, right? Maintainable, right. Uh, readable, right? So we put in a lot of different comments. Uh, we break down uh, SAS by blocks. So a natural uh, set of blocks would be whatever your data is, mm -hmm. you know, and, and any number of different proc statements that you might have. Data steps or proc statements doesn't matter. We'll break them all down in blocks so that the program programmer can follow which code has been successfully translated and then those blocks that we may not be able to completely translate the code where the python person would have to kind of fill in the blanks right right so so let me just uh execute this real quick wow and Again, you know, this is, I know it's verbose code, right? You, so you take a couple of lines of SAS code, but in order to make it maintainable and understandable for everybody, um, we're erring on the side of verbose uh, versus uh, optimization. Refactoring has really never been, the definition of refactoring has never been optimized for that cloud architecture, right? Right, right. The, the purpose is to get there as quickly as possible. And, and there's a lot of benefits to us doing this for clients. One of the one of the big things that that uh, that we offer for a client is the ability to get onto their target uh, cloud architecture. Uh, it, it, maybe it's PySpark uh, being executed on Databricks, on Azure, and accessing uh, a Gen2 data lake, as an example. Right. We want to get them as there as quickly as possible. So that they could start experiencing that that new platform, right? What does it mean to their process? You know, uh, what what kind of what kind of upskill would the do they need to take? Uh, what kind of changes, uh, if any, to their procedures do they need to take now that they're up on a cloud architecture? So this this can be something that's more permanent. It's not optimized, obviously, but it's a, it could be permanent, or it can be uh, an interim solution, right? Get them onto the cloud architecture as quickly as possible, right. and, and when their sense. budget and their time permits, then they could go for a full replacement if they chose to. Right, and and you can also extend it, correct? Uh, absolutely. You know, once it's 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 regular Python, right? So, you know, this is code that anybody's going to recognize, right? So any Python geek can start hacking away at it, right? Nice, very nice, very nice. <clears throat> so it's it we we really try to couple everything with with. Um, efficiency get it translated as quickly as possible but the translation has to be sufficiently verbose so that anybody can look at anybody with python experience can look at it and know what the heck it's doing